Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Business Spotlight. I'm your host today, Todd Rodden. I'm a certified business and executive coach. I own Aspire Action Coach based here in the Southwest Ohio region. We're thrilled to have you join us. I think you're going to love this story about a, really a leader in the wealth management space in, in this region. So we're thrilled to have Joe Lynn here with us. Joe is the co-founder and CEO of Dynergy Wealth Management. They work with clients uh, to really provide a personal level of service around their wealth management, their financial planning, finding the right insurance type solutions for them and, and their lives and families as well. So, Joe Lynn, thrilled to have you join us here today. Take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about Dynergy and also how you know, how'd you get started in wealth management? Yeah, it's it's been, um, hi, my name is Joe Lynn. I'm the CEO of uh, Dynergy Wealth Management. Um, we started our company, actually, we will be eight years old tomorrow, um, which is which is really quite a milestone. Um, but I, I have two partners, so there's three of us, uh, and we're an LLC, and we all come from little different backgrounds. And we have the one nice thing that we did at the beginning was is, is we started with a, what I would say a succession plan is built in to, to our team. Um, so I'm the CEO. Uh, Tim Fitzharris is our chief investment officer. And Tim is also our youngest member. He is, he is uh, in his high 40s. Um, a heck of a baseball player, played baseball at Ball State. But, uh, and then Martin Murray. Um, I would get back to Tim. Tim's background is more in the investment management side. He's worked at all the big wirehouses here in Cincinnati. And nationally, he's got quite the, quite the background. Uh, Martin Murray, our director, and he's our compliance guy, and he does our brand, make sure we stay in our brand and, and everything on our website. And his background came from Procter & Gamble. He's a retired Procter & Gamble guy. I met Martin in a previous life on a board of directors when I was the CEO of Emory Federal Credit Union. And the three of us came together, and, and our, our passion for taking care of people is really what brought this business together. We all three have had extensive opportunities with other investment management companies. And where we felt there was a, a real need is the way people take care of their clients and the underserved clients in this business. It's, it's kind of crazy. But, and what I mean by underserved is people that don't have seven figures, you know, they may have 500,000, they may have 300,000. It really doesn't matter. Because Todd, as you know, you've spent your whole career building your nest egg. Okay. And I'm sure your father and your father-in-law and, and other friends have done the same thing. And you did the, you did the right thing. You raised a family, you saved for it, and then you're ready to retire. And you want somebody who understands you and understands your wealth. And they'll, and they'll look at it as, you, you know, your wealth is, is, is your nest egg. And we appreciate that. And we also look at it as, you know, you hire us to do a job. So you can live your life in retirement or get ready for retirement. Or even if you're just starting and you're a business owner, we have people all over the spectrum. But that's what started Dynergy Wealth Management is we felt there was a big hole here, especially locally. But we think it's it's nationally that we're more than just a name on your statement. You get to know us, you know who we are. We get to know you and we get to know your family. Hey, and Joe, I know we we talked offline prior. You had a very interesting career uh, prior to starting Dynergy. Maybe just take a minute, kind of recap some of the, the key experiences, leadership experiences you brought in into founding this organization. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of been an interesting background. But many moons ago, I took a, um, an IT position with a national company out of Detroit, Michigan, Southfield, Michigan, in the credit union business, and um, and I worked specifically with credit unions. And then also got to know a lot of investment advisors and have helped out investment advisors starting their business. And then I um, just had to get off the road. I was traveling all the time. Our kids were getting older. And then I got hired on as Emory, at Emory Federal Credit Union and became their CEO. And I was their CEO for 20 years and absolutely loved it. Um, that's been my background. And when you're the CEO of a, a bank or a credit union, you work with a lot of different people in a lot of different areas. And that has carried through to what we're doing today. Because really, if it comes down to it, everybody's doing the same thing. What sets us apart is our personal touch and how we take care of people. And that's what set you, that's really what set this whole process 
in, in action. Um, but that's my background. Uh, absolutely love doing what I'm doing, but I'm in this business now because we like to take care of people. And that's, that's a big key for us and offer things that they don't get today. So um, you hit a little bit on this. So like maybe share with us, who's your ideal client? So somebody who's listening uh, in on this and say, hey, they, sh they should reach out because uh, it'd be a great connection. And what have been your keys for, you know, kind of marketing the, the business and growing it? How do, you, how do you generate new customers? You know, it it's is we'll start with our ideal client. You, you know, everybody has to have a date range, right, or an age range. So our our sweet spot is that is that fifty five to seventy. Okay, um, male or female it doesn't really matter. That we're not we're not breaking down there. But and when it comes to investable assets, you know, we'll take really pretty much anything. We don't have a minimum amount. We'd love to take all the big guys, but you know, our sweet spot when it really gets down to it is that say 200,000 to 700,000 client who's who has spent a lot of time building up their their wealth or they're just getting started in their business owners. We do we have more than a few business owners that are just getting started and they're in there. They're getting ready to turn 35 to 38. And they own a business. They're like, "Oh my God, what are we going to do?" Um, and when when we talk to to a couple, we talk to both the male and the female, the husband and the wife, or the couple, or however you want to explain that out. And and that's and that's how we um, that's how we move forward here. Uh, we've done very well in that business. Um, and our sweet spot is is as I said earlier. I, I think it's well underserved. And what I mean by underserved is people don't know who their advisor is. And I think that's important in today's world. Yeah. So I know I know you're based in Cincinnati. You got the lovely picture uh, of the yeah. Cincinnati skyline behind you. So um, are you mostly focused in in that region, or your customer base uh, spread out geographically? We have some. We have a couple employees that are that are outside of of Cincinnati. We have one in Texas, one in Michigan, and one in South Carolina. Um, and they're they're advisors, and they use our platform, and they're they're building their practices or their businesses in those areas. And then we also are, you know, the bulk of our business comes from Cincinnati and I should really say the tri-state region. So if you know Cincinnati, you know what that means, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Okay. But uh, the three of us are all Cincinnati guys. I'm a West side guy. Um, <laughs> you know, Martin's more of a, uh, you know, a center of the, the town and Tim's more of a North up in the Lakota school district area. If you know, happen to know where that area is. Yeah. So yeah, all the folks in this region will know exactly uh, where those are. <laughs> so, uh, the, um, so uh, building upon that, then, uh, you know, how do you best find those next customers? What what marketing strategies have proven to bear the most fruit for you? You know, when we first started our business, I, I got to tell you, Todd, we walked in to our office and we had nothing but four walls, carpet, and that's it. So we sat on boxes and we've literally started this thing from scratch. We own everything we do. Um, a hundred percent lock, stock and barrel. We don't answer to any big brothers, but when it gets to marketing, we have, we get a, a good amount of word of mouth because people, if they like what you're doing for them, they're going to talk you up, but we're very active on Facebook. We're very active on, um, LinkedIn and we're active on Twitter and we, we try to post three, four days a week. Um, we're, we have a blog going on our website. I think our website's pretty good. I think it can always get better, but um, I still believe in being able to touch clients no matter where they're sitting. You know, we do client interviews like this right now, like I'm doing with you, okay? If somebody wants to meet face-to-face, -face, we'll do it. If they want to come to our office, we'll do it. We They want us to go to them. But how do we get clients? It's really by taking care of other clients and and taking care of our clients. If you take care of your clients, guess what? They're going to be your best salesman or salesperson, I should say. Do you feel like you have to like uh, kind of overtly ask your clients for referrals or are they just naturally doing it because of the the personal touch? You know, it's more of the personal touch. Um, I, I think it goes unsaid that we we don't directly ask. But, um, you know, it's kind of funny. A lot of clients, after they get to know us, they'll say, hey, you know, I got to have my brother give you a call. I got to have my sister or a friend or this a co-worker. Um, and then all of a sudden, somebody will see something online and we post a little story and guess what? It, it just all of a sudden hits something. And this is an emotional business. Money's emotional. You, you got to separate 
you got to se separate money from the personal feelings of the person you're dealing with because when it comes to your money people get a little people get a little funny and they want to make sure they're being taken care of and i and, and we get it the three of us get it which is important uh, well uh, well again congrats you mentioned uh, tomorrow is your eighth birthday uh for for the business as well so eight years any entrepreneur, you know, their journey has some uh, hills and valleys, some twists and turns in the road. So maybe share with us a, a key challenge you've had during that eight-year tenure, and how did you overcome it? When did you learn? You know, it's 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 interesting when you know the, how the commercial says, "When your name's on the door, it means a whole lot more." And I think it's kind of funny, but I've always wanted to own my own business. Um, that was one of my goals coming out of school. I wanted to be a CEO, own my own business. But the challenge is always, there's always something going on, right? So we start the company and things are going well and then COVID hits. And it's like, holy moly, everybody's losing their mind. The markets are going crazy. And then we survive that, we get through that. And then what happens next is, you know, there's always something going on, right? There's an election, we've, we've survived now, we just survived our third election. And who knows what's going to happen? You know, everybody's all excited. The market's going crazy, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, there's always knee jerk reaction. This is a long term game. Um, and the biggest challenge for us is what we do and how we do it. If you want to have the pedal to the metal, you don't need us. And that's just the, that's a fact. You know, you're, you're fooling yourself. You don't need anybody. Put all your money in the SP 500. Just let it sit somewhere at, at one of the custodians and let it ride and just throw, keep throwing money in it. And you know you're in it for 30 years. Well, just go ahead and play the game. But you got to have a stomach for the loss. Everybody yeah. wants the gain, but nobody has a stomach for the loss. And what we do different than a lot of people do, and, and I'd have to challenge that everybody does, is we manage the three different things here at Dynergy Wealth Management. And this is what we've learned, is we manage the capital preservation opportunities and volatility. And if you think about that capital preservation, I think that's what we just spoke about early, in, earlier. You've worked hard for your money, right? And you don't want to have a 50, 60% loss because you don't have the stomach for it, one, two, you just don't want to throw your money away. Opportunities, we can go anywhere because we own what we do. And volatility, unless you're a big, um, you, you, you know, up and down the person and you like roller coasters, we try to make that ride as smooth as possible and and always work hard to um, do what you need. So really, the biggest challenge is, is we're quick on our feet and we have we have redone our approach four times since we started this business. And I'm most I'm I'm most proud of it. And I know Martin and Tim are because Tim works very hard on our investments. He does a phenomenal job. He's always looking for opportunities. And we've changed how we manage money. We don't manage money the same way we did almost eight years ago. We, we're, we're different and we get better all the time. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But I'm telling you one thing, we work our butts off. And this isn't just a, a hold and run. That's not what we believe in. Um, we will go anywhere for an opportunity and to protect your money. Uh, hey, I appreciate you sharing that, uh, especially the, hey, you, you've learned, you've evolved, you've changed your approach four times now. A lot of times folks get you kind of get stuck in their ways, right? No matter what kind of business you're in, right? But uh, realizing you got to keep turning the dials uh, to, to get to the next level. So, mm -hmm. so with that same uh, thought in mind, what's the current challenge? that you have out in front of it that the team's trying to solve for? You know, I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's really going to be twofold. This, this ought to be a very interesting six months considering the elections now behind us and who knows how this whole thing's going to go and how this whole thing's going to shake out one. So we got to make sure we have our fingers on the pulse of what's going on around us. Right. Um, you just don't know what's, what's coming with the new administration. Um, two, Another challenge is we have to keep growing. We have to keep attracting people. We got to keep taking care of people. We got to keep providing great service. Because if you don't do that, you know, something we're going to, we're just eventually just not to get, going to get to where we want to go. And no, we don't have to be the biggest guy in town. We really don't. Um, but the thing that we want to do is make sure our clients are happy. And that's always a challenge, Todd. I don't care what business you're in. I think every business owner, whether you own a business or you work for a company, 
what sets you apart in today's world, it's customer service and the way you take care of your people. And that's always a challenge and you always have to keep moving and doing better at it. So building upon that, I love that. So what is something service-wise you think you're going to need to solve for in the future? Um, you, you know, making sure that we, we give our clients the information that they're looking for, things that that really they're concerned about moving forward, that and staying in front of them. Um, you know, if, if a client doesn't want to meet with us, that's fine. It doesn't hurt our feelings. But if they want to meet once a quarter and they like to meet in person or if they uh, we have one of our better clients, this is, I think you'll think this is funny, who we meet once a, a quarter with them. And we go to a different brewery every time. And the five of us go, it's it's Tim and myself, and then those two, and they'll usually bring somebody with them. And we'll sit at a, at a brewery and have a beer or two because they're big craft brew people. And, you, you know, that just that just tells you we'll do that. We're not to sit behind a cherry desk and, uh, you know, pound their chest and spend all this money. But I, I think it's also one of the things that, like I said, is looking for opportunities we got to protect your money the best we can. And, you know, Todd, I haven't touched this yet, but Dynergy means the balance between two points. And we do believe that. Um, we don't think everything, and, and of course the client dictates this, but we don't think everything should be in fixed income. We don't think everything needs to be in equity. And we bring balance to your life when it comes to your money. And listen, we listen to you. You tell us what to do and how you want it done. And we run with it. Yeah, love that example of meeting them where they're going to be most comfortable, right? In that <laughs> case, a brewery, right? So, yeah, right. If you want a cold beer, I'm in. Hey, sign me up on that meeting as well. So <laughs> so, we're, so eight years in, uh, what's your vision? Where do you see this going? You, you mentioned, hey, that you've got kind of built-in succession, but what's, what's the longer-term uh, dream for the business? Uh, the longer-term dream for the business, it would be to, you know, maybe partner with a couple other advisors. And when I say partner is look for look for other advisory firms that are getting ready to look and in, look into moving on our succession plan and transition into retirement. Um, get get out in front of more people. We've done a couple of those now and done very well with that. Um, and and we're always looking for good people. Uh, when 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 I say good people, we we look for people that have the same mindset as we do. And we would love to grow our business younger. Um, I think that's a big key. Uh, and like I said, w if you deal with me, I've, I've been in the business world a while. And who do you really, what's one of the questions we get all the time? Well, Joe, what happens if you retire? Yeah. Martin, what happens if you retire? Well, Tim Fitzharris is in his upper 40s. He's going to be in this business a long time. And it's always nice. That's every client gets to know Tim. Every client works with Tim. And um, it's important because, you know, Todd, it could be you. And, you know, it's going to be like, holy moly, what's going to happen when you retire? My family doesn't know you. You're gone. Well, your family will know Tim, your, your, you know, your, your other half, your kids. And you'll, you'll know me. I don't just disappear. Um, I plan on being in this business a long time. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Uh, and another big challenge we have is the sales cycle. It just takes a long time. People want to do it yesterday until they don't want to do it yesterday anymore. And then all of a sudden they get busy in their life and then they call you up and say, hey, we got to get this done now. And that can be very frustrating from a sales standpoint, but it's okay. You just you just learn as you as you move on. Hey, we talked about your team, and, and I love those components around. Hey, uh, you know, growing the firm younger, and also that hey, some of your your likely successors get to know all of the clients uh, as well. But you, and you also shared that some of your employees are geographically spread out as well. So, how as you look to do that, how do you attract the future talent? All right, how do you keep them in the firm once you get them? Um, you, you know, you keep them in a the firm by allowing them a chance to, to build their book under under our Dynergy umbrella, okay? So if an advisor is looking for some place to land or to get started in this business, this is a great spot. They own their book, okay? Their book is theirs, and they use our process and our back room and our investment strategy. And that's how we get people from out of town. It's, 
is you may have, you know, Todd Roden in, in Texas, and you're really big in insurance products, okay? And you don't like doing the investment management side. You're looking for a partner who cares like you do. So that way you do what you do best. And what's that? You get out and market and meet people. And we allow you to do that. Um, we want you out on the streets. We want you in front of people. We want you to take care of them. And, I, and we want to have a good partnership with you. And you understand what we do, which allows you to go out and grow your business. Yes. So, Joe, we have a, a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who watch this, especially those who are maybe newer in their journey. So what would be the keys to success you would share with a newer entrepreneur? Hey, what, what would you tell yourself now if you were starting all over? Uh, it's not easy. And don't give up. This is a marathon and you got to keep moving forward. There's ups, there's downs. You'll wonder, oh my God, what have I done? What have I, what am I thinking? And if you believe in what you're doing and you believe in the product that you have, keep at it, keep working. Yes, you, you will put in hours. You really don't ever leave, but I'm not working 90 hours a week. That's, I'm, I don't mean that is you, you've you got your blood, sweat, and tears in it. And I think that's exciting. Everything I've always done in my, in my, in my career, I've owned and we've owned. And um, I think that's important. It's, you know, this is a process. And, you know, if you've ever run a marathon, you don't come out in your first two or three miles and you run a sprint because if you do, come <laughs> mile 10, buddy, you're in trouble. And then yeah. come mile 18, you're done. And that's, and that's, I liken this, entrepreneur entrepreneurial stuff to the same thing as running a marathon i've done 16 full marathons i get it uh and that's what i do on the side is I, i'm a big exercise guy i love to play i'm getting into pickleball but i'm a runner i run five days a week exercise five days a week i do spinning um love the family and but you gotta have you gotta have your out so you can get away from it but you got to, you know, keep your focus and just keep going, keep going forward. You'll be fine. It's just, you just got to trust me. You'll be fine. Maybe run that, ne run that next mile. Right. Just keep running that next hey, mile. Hey, you know, it's really, Hey, I don't care how steep the hill is, man. You'll make it. Once you get there, then you'll be fine. <laughs> so as we uh, look to wrap up here, our time flies uh, in these conversations. So what are the best ways for folks to stay connected with you and or to follow uh, Dynergy? Well, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn as Joe Lind. Okay. You, you can find me out there on LinkedIn and I'm sure Todd will put that in, in the notes. Uh, but I'm also on Facebook and I'm also on Twitter. But uh, our website is another great location. It's Dinergy Wealth. That's D-I-N-E-R-G-Y wealth.com. You can go there and find out all about us and, and find me there. Or you can email me, jlind, L-I-N-D at dinergywealth.com. Or you can give it, give us a call. My my direct number is 513-878-0195. I answer every call. I'll get back to you. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. So, you won't be disappointed. So I love that. And you know, I get a lot of folks who always will highlight, hey, what makes them unique is well, we provide a personal touch of service. But very, very few actually provide their cell phone number uh, on these interviews. That means that you really are open to a personal contact around that. So thanks for sharing <laughs> that, Joe. Um, no problem. Final question. You're not out of here yet. The, uh, oh. What are you inspired by today? You know, honestly, um, it, it's really, it's my family. Uh, I married my high school sweetheart um, and we've been together over 40 years now. We have three wonderful kids and we have five grandkids and they inspire me every day. They provide a lot of action. They provide a lot of, um, when I say action and energy, it's incredible. And you learn from everybody. Um, and I love to, I love to network and I love to meet new people. So if you want to have a cup of coffee sometime, call me. I, I love that kind of stuff. I love networking and I love meeting people and I love learning. And the best way to do that is to, is to listen and not talk. Listen to that talk. I love it. Well, Joe, thank you for sharing your story. Your uh, story as an entrepreneur, more background around Dynergy uh, Wealth Management. Again, encourage the folks listening in on this to go check out the website, your blogs, your Facebook and LinkedIn pages as well. We'll have those all in the show notes for folks uh, to make it easy. But again, 
appreciate your story. Lots of great insights around truly making you know a personal touch, a, a personal connection with folks and with, with your clientele. So for those listeners, we're thrilled to have you join us here today. We encourage you to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. So you receive future messages for other inspiring entrepreneurs like you heard from Joe Lynn of Dynergy here today. So with that, Joe, thank you very much. Yeah, Todd, thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And my honor. And I hope you all have a terrific day. Thank you.